Well, hi, everybody. It's Dr. Gymnatis again from Cardiovascular Interventions. And uh, this is an introduction to a three-part series that I've made on shopping and choices that you make when you go out shopping over this holiday season. And of course, the whole emphasis here is to buy real food. And my emphasis is always to eliminate sugar, artificial ingredients, all processed foods, all processed vegetable seed oils, and buy foods that are in their natural state full of fiber. So I hope you enjoy this. It's in a three-part series. And uh, if you need more information, I've put lots of links at the bottom of this video. And I hope you enjoy it and have a good, healthy shopping season. Thank you. I was very fortunate today to ask Jacqueline and Laura to go out do some shopping, a typical shopping for a typical family. So I'm gonna dive right into it because what should we be feeding ourselves and what should we be feeding our families and our children? So early in the morning, we get out of bed and we're gonna have breakfast today if we decide to have breakfast. Now remember that if you're on a fasting program, you can skip the breakfast. Breakfast does not necessarily have to be the most important meal of the day. It is not the most important meal of the day. And if you're not hungry, my advice to most people is skip the breakfast. But let's say you are gonna go have breakfast. So let's take a look at what we've bought over here. Some people start the day with a soda drink. 20 ounces of a soda can have about 10 teaspoons of sugar in it. This is so high in sugar that it's gonna cause you a huge rise in your insulin levels. So immediately you're in the storage mode. High concentrations of sugar first thing in the morning is to be avoided. Because the other thing is that the body has a circadian cycle. And in that circadian cycle, you become a little insulin resistant first thing in the morning. So the detrimental effects of sugar are far worse in the morning than in the afternoon when you are less insulin resistant. So I think this is an absolute no-no for the breakfast. So most people have some coffee and have some tea. And that's fine with me. Coffee is fine. People always ask me about coffee. You can have two to three cups of coffee a day and can be caffeinated, decaffeinated. It really makes no difference to me. The only people who should avoid coffee are those who are getting palpitations. If they're having arrhythmias, they are not to consume any uh, caffeinated drinks early in the morning. This contains of caffeine, caffeine, so does coffee. So we'll move on from coffee and tea. And then we have milk. So milk, milk for children. Adults in general should not be drinking milk. You can add milk to some of your foods, for example, you can add it to your coffee and your, your tea, but only children should be drinking milk because they are growing. Once you've grown up, you don't need milk. And I've talked about this on many of my previous videos. Milk is a solid, it's not a liquid, and it has casein, which is a protein which is not very easily digested. Now, it, fortunately, it does have vitamin D, and that is good for you, and it also has other sugars in it, which are lactose. So we've got to be careful if you're lactose intolerant. So generally speaking, we shouldn't be drinking milk, but if you do, and you can have it with some cereal, but let's look at the cereal now. Now the cereals. Cereals are a problem in general. They are full of sugar, they're man-made, they're processed, and they're ultra digestible. And therefore these are processed foods, which I absolutely don't like. Cereals should be avoided for children and adults. So let's look at this label on this cereal over here. It says that this cereal has 190 calories per serving, and out of that, carbohydrates are 47 grams with an added 11 grams of sugar. So the sugar is added 11 grams. 11 grams of sugar, that means that approximately 44 calories 44 calories in a serving is coming out of pure added sugar, and the rest is coming from carbohydrates. 47 grams, so 47 times four, that's almost 90% of all the calories are coming from carbs. This is pure carbohydrate, pure carbs. This is gonna stimulate your, your insulin levels, and once your insulin levels go so high, you're gonna go into storage mode. That means no matter what you eat or drink for the next hour or two, you're gonna put everything into storage. Your insulin will spike up, and stay up. So guess what happens a few hours later? Two hours later, your insulin level is still high, but it's brought the sugar down, but it takes time for the insulin to come down. So you get what we call reactive hypoglycemia. Your sugar starts tanking. So two hours after having a highly sugary drink in the morning or a sugary cereal in the morning, 
high in carbohydrates and ultra digestible, you're going to have a low sugar. So you start feeling fatigued, tired, you get that low two to three hours later. And then you're going to want to eat again because you're hungry again. You see, these carbohydrates, they don't satiate you. That means you don't feel satisfied. It's not like you've eaten and now you feel, oh, I'm, I'm full, I don't need to eat anymore. No, you can keep eating carbs. The signal to your brain never gets there that you've had dinner or you've had breakfast or your stomach is full. Carbs do not deliver the signal. The signal that you've actually eaten and you are now full comes when you consume fats and proteins in general. So these carbohydrates don't give you that good signal. Not a very good idea to consume cereals, even for children. Now, they talk about fiber in cereal. Let's talk about the fiber. The fiber, let's see how much fiber there is in this particular cereal. It says um, dietary fiber, six grams, of which less than one gram is soluble, five grams are insoluble. Fiber in general is very good for you. And we should be consuming about 30 grams of fiber a day. The average American consumes between 10 and 15. That's it. Now, why is fiber so important? Because we can't digest fiber. Because fiber is important for your bacteria in your gut so that the fiber goes undigested down to your colon, and then in your colon, the bacteria in your colon digest this fiber. And when they digest this fiber, they liberate good nutrients for your benefit into your bloodstream. So you get short-chain fatty acids, you get butyrate, and these cause the intestinal lining to be healthy so that you don't get leaky gut, it fosters the growth of good bacteria because those are the bacteria that love fiber and not sugar. Now, of course, if you're consuming a lot of sugar, the bacteria you're going to get in your gut are sugar-loving bacteria. And those are the bad bacteria. You want the bacteria that live on fiber. That's why you need to consume fiber because you want to invite the growth of a good variety of microbiota or bacteria in your gut. At the same time, you want them to do you a favor because you're housing them in your colon to release good, nutritious things for your benefit. That's why fiber is good. Fiber is not good so that you don't get constipated or you have big bulky bowel movements. Others, you can just go and take Metamucil. No, that will relieve your constipation. But the real reason that you need to be e eating a lot of fiber is for the bacteria in your gut. And you need to be eating a variety of fiber. So as I go through all this here, I will be talking about fiber and the benefits of fiber. Remember, 30 grams. Most of us are half, maybe even less than what we should be consuming. So what happens, the bad bacteria in our gut, and therefore that changes our metabolism, that leads to obesity, metabolic syndrome, cancer, they're all related to your gut bacteria. Very important. Now, the other things that people do have for breakfast is eggs. Eggs, what's wrong with eggs? Nothing, it's whole, it's natural. You can have two eggs a day, you can have three eggs a day if you're a big person and very active, no problem. Yolk, is yolk a problem? Absolutely not. So some people say that, oh, there's too much fat in the yolk. No, the cholesterol that's in the yolk is a fraction compared to the cholesterol your own liver makes for your body. So the cholesterol in, in there is not a problem. Multiple studies have shown that. And the protein in eggs is very healthy. It's very high quality protein. So eggs are okay. A little bit of cheese. Cheese, if you want to lose weight, then avoid cheese because cheese is very dense in calories. But overall, I don't mind cheese too much, but only a small amount, not, not too much every day. So we're going to move on. So talking about fiber, here we have apples. Apples in the morning, one apple in the morning, extremely beneficial. It's got pectin in it. It's a nice fiber and it's got lots of nice other fibers as well. It has a little bit of sugar and because it's not in the form of juice, it's going to be digested slowly into your gut. So because the digestion is slower, your sugar rise is not going to be astronomically high as it is in the form of, let's say, do you have any juice here? Can you pass me one of those juices? So here's a juice. So this thing, this particular one is grape juice. So in one cup of this juice, how many grapes will I need to actually crush to create that? The answer is about 30 to 40 grapes. And nobody in their mind will be eating 30 to 40 grapes at one time. So what happens is this liquid gets down too quickly, causes a huge insulin rise, huge sugar rise in your body, and you're going to get that insulin burst, you're going to go into storage mode, 
and then you're going to be hungry within an hour or two again. And there's no signal from this that, hey, I'm, I'm full. So the way to consume fruit juice is the fruit itself. No juices, please, for you or your children. No juice. Juice is not a health food. So orange juice is another thing. People think that that's very healthy for the children. It's not. With or without the pulp makes no difference. The sugar content for breakfast, even during the rest of the day, far too high. To eat the fruit. So we have some tangerines here, and these are fantastic. Here we go. That's what you want to do, the whole thing. No juice. The fiber that's in here prevents that massive rise in your insulin. Digestion is slower and your pancreas will not be overwhelmed and you will feel satiated. You won't get hungry so quickly because you've eaten the real thing. Whole foods. This is an example of a whole food. Apple is a whole food. Now, the next thing that I have here is uh, a yogurt that I have. And is this good for breakfast? And the answer is yes. This is a fermented food. It's yogurt. So I'm very fond of yogurt. I think that yogurt is very, very good for you. Just make sure there's no added sugar in it. So when the sugars are in the yogurt, that's not a good idea. Look for a yogurt label that has no added sugar in it. Okay? So yogurt has lots of probiotics in them. And you can eat kefir. Kefir is another one. So yogurt, yogurt. Now what I have with yogurt every day or kefir every day is blueberries. I don't see blueberries over here, but blueberries. The darker the skin, the greater the phytochemicals inside, the flavonoids. And they are not for you, even though most people think that it's for you, it's for your bacteria. So again, the theme is your gut bacteria. When you put the right bugs in and they are feeding on polyphenols, you're gonna grow the right bacteria in your gut. You want the right kinds in your gut and you want them to stay there and they will heal your body. They'll prevent metabolic syndrome. They'll prevent leaky gut syndrome. If you get leaky gut, you're going to get chronic inflammatory disease that's related to connective tissue disease, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, chronic liver disease, mental fog, vascular disease, coronary artery disease, heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, name it. Your gut is the source of your health. So I realized this painfully over the years, seeing my cardiac patients come in and out year after year. And I said that there's something causing the inflammation. And when I would ask my professors, they wouldn't really have a solid answer. And the answer is this ongoing inflammation that's driving the vascular process is coming from your gut. So we got to take care of our gastrointestinal lining and the kind of bacteria we have in our intestinal tract. So there you go. So we have some grapes over here. Grapes should be consumed with the skin and you can have five, six, seven grapes, but not a whole bowl of grapes because there's a lot of sugar in it. Now, the sugar that's found in fruit is called fructose. Sugar, table sugar, is 50% glucose and 50% fructose. The glucose is metabolized all over your body like I've talked about previously, the fructose is only metabolized by one organ, well, predominant, 99%, one organ, and that's your liver. So when you drink juices, when you eat too much fruit, you're overwhelming your liver. And one of the biggest problems we have is fatty liver. Fatty liver, there's an epidemic of fatty liver. Why? Because the fructose gets converted to fat in your liver. Now you get fatty liver, you're gonna be prone to diabetes, inflammation, high blood pressure, uric acid levels go up, joint problems, all sorts of issues. Stay away from excessive fructose. Fructose should be consumed in a normal way with fruit, seasonal, pretty much around fall, so that, that you store fat that you can use in winter. But we eat fruit throughout the year, Winter never comes, so we just gain weight throughout the year. So nature built it into us. When I went to Alaska, the bears were eating a lot of berries right at the fall, and the berries come out at that time because they have massive amounts of fructose in them, and the fructose changes the metabolism of the bear, and the bear then puts on all that weight. See, nature's teaching us all this. 
So why are we consuming so much fructose? Today's children, excessive fructose, far too much fructose. It's one of the leading causes of childhood obesity as well. It starts right here in the kitchen. No fructose, because you're gonna get it inevitably in the normal foods that you eat. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this short series and don't forget to watch the other two videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because there's gonna be lots of good educational materials coming on. And also, look at the bottom, there's lots of links to other videos. So have a great, healthy, happy holiday. <music>